Thank you. Mr. President, I rise today to speak about the destructive path that the majority is headed down with their attempts to repeal the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. The Republican bill, and I'm referring to the House Republican bill that the Senate now is considering, in addition to other ideas, is, in my judgment, uh, not really a tax, uh, not really a health care bill, but a tax cut bill. It's a tax cut bill for the super rich, not only the rich, but the, the wealthiest, literally the wealthiest few Americans, while increasing costs for middle class families. It gives states the option to allow insurance companies to discriminate again, like they did before the ACA was passed, and also would allow um, those same uh, policies to devastate our hospitals, particularly those in rural communities. I live in a state where 48 out of 67 counties are, in fact, rural counties in Pennsylvania. The Republican bill would rip away health care, according to the Congressional Budget Office, would rip away health care from 23 million Americans. Here's what that means in Pennsylvania, based upon the Congressional Budget Office numbers. Up to 770,000 Pennsylvanians could lose health insurance by 2026 if the bill were to pass. 48,000 Pennsylvania seniors on Medicare could lose access to services covered by Medicaid. Third, 52,600 Pennsylvanians with disabilities could lose Medicaid coverage. I live in a state where, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, over 722,000 Pennsylvanians with disabilities rely on medical assistance for their medical care. Medical assistance is the state version of Medicaid. So we know that if you're a child, or if you're a senior, or you have a disability, uh, many Americans in those categories, of course, rely upon Medicaid. We also know, based upon the CBO numbers, that 180,000 Pennsylvanians could lose access to mental health and substance abuse care now provided by Medicaid. We've heard a lot of talk and, and a lot of work, actually, in this chamber, in this body, as well as the other body, in the last year on the opioid problem. We have Democrats and Republicans focusing on a major national problem, an urgent public health problem. And we've made some progress, not enough, but some good progress on uh, opioid legislation. All of that would be badly, badly undermined if we made the changes to Medicaid that some want to make here uh, because of the significant impact that uh, cuts to Medicaid would have on the challenge of reducing the opioid crisis. So even the possibility that this bill might become law is, in, in a sense, destabilizing and destabilizing to a marketplace, a healthcare marketplace, that's been better each year we move forward from the passage of the ACA in 2010. Just last week, the Pennsylvania Insurance Department announced averaged uh, average proposed rate increases for health insurance premiums for 2018. Here's what the, here's what the uh, Pennsylvania Insurance Department told us. If we maintain current law, premiums will go up 8.8 percent in Pennsylvania under current law. If the Republicans get rid of the cost-sharing subsidies, which many seem to either want to get rid of or want to ignore, uh, thereby creating uncertainty. If, if those cost-sharing subsidies are um, thrown out the window, premiums will go up two and a half times as much by over 20 percent. So, so far, 8.8 8 percent under current law, 20 percent just based upon the cost-sharing um, cost subsidies um, being taken away. Third, if, if, if the individual mandate is is um, uh, repealed, premiums will go up almost three times as much, by 23 percent. And if you get rid of both the uh, cost-sharing subsidies and the individual mandate, guess what? Pennsylvanians, 
premiums in our state will go up by over 36 percent. So we've got a basic choice to make, at least as it relates to Pennsylvania. Current law, it's 8.8 percent. We should try to bring that down. I think there are ways we could work together in a bipartisan fashion to bring that down. Uh, but if you go in the direction many want to go, especially on the Republican side, uh, undermine or do nothing about cost sharing, uh, get rid of the indiv individual mandate, premiums go up 36 percent. So folks can make their choice, uh, go up about 9 percent or go up 36 percent. It's a real simple choice, and there's basically two options. The bill that was passed in the House will destroy the lives of many vulnerable Pennsylvanians. Uh, what should we do about it? Well, the first thing we should do with the bill is throw it in the trash heap. That's where it belongs. And I hope that's where uh, Senate Republicans are headed and that they're going to start over uh, on a new bill because the bill that was passed in the House is very bad for the country. We know that among the three million Pennsylvanians with pre-existing conditions are two remarkable young women whose mother first contacted me in 2009. Stacy Ritter, who's from Mannheim, Pennsylvania, is a mom of four children, including her twin daughters, Hannah and Madeline, who are depicted here in a picture when they were much younger. Hannah and Madeline were diagnosed with a rare and dangerous type of leukemia when they were just four years old. And you can see their picture there at that, at that time, I guess about eight years ago now. Stacy and her husband Benjamin went bankrupt, went bankrupt, trying to pay their daughter's medical bills. She wrote to me at the time saying that without health care reform, quote, my girls will be unable to afford care. That, that is if they are eligible for care that is critically necessary to maintain uh, th this chronic condition. Now, fortunately, things have changed in the last eight or so years. Fortunately, Hannah and Madeline are healthy young women now. They're freshmen at Arcadia University and are doing well. They rely on the Affordable Care Act's protections to ensure that they have access to affordable coverage, whether they're on their parents' plan or purchasing a plan in the individual market. And as you can see on my left, a picture of Hannah and Madeline uh, today as, as college freshmen. Without the Affordable Care Act, Hannah and Madeline could be denied health insurance. As their mom said, uh, they could be, quote, punished and rejected because they had the misfortune of developing cancer as a child, unquote. The Republican bill passed in the House would put them at risk of being denied health insurance or charged more because they are cancer survivors. I don't know why anyone would support a bill that would do that. Just a number of months ago, I received a letter from Pam Simpson from Chester County, Pennsylvania. Pam and her son, Rowan, have their story to tell. Rowan is five years old, and a number of years ago, he was diagnosed with autism. I talked about Rowan before on this floor and in other places and what the Medicaid program means for Rowan and his family. Medicaid provides important services for Rowan and others with disabilities, enabling Rowan to go to, to preschool and allowing his mother uh, to work. Here's what his mom said to me. I won't read the whole letter, but the, I'll just highlight the first page. The first page is Rowan's life before he was diagnosed with autism, all of the challenges that he and his family had. Rowan's life after diagnosis of autism, but then ultimately uh, when he received Medicaid or medical assistance, as we call it in Pennsylvania. Here's what his mom told me in the letter after he received um, word that he was uh, going to be enrolled in medical assistance. Late, I'm quoting now, late January 2016, I applied for Medicaid, which is medical assistance. Uh, Rowan was awarded medical assistance, and we were able to obtain wraparound services. These services included a behavioral, health, uh, or a behavioral specialist consultant and a therapeutic staff support worker. And then she goes on later in that paragraph to say that these 
two features in the overall wraparound services. These wraparound services, quote, have been a godsend, unquote. Then she goes on later and says that I'm, quote, I'm thrilled by Rowan's daily progress. I cannot say enough great things about this program. Without medical assistance, I'm confident that I could not work full time to support our family. Our family would be bankrupt or our son would go without the therapies he sincerely needs, unquote. And here's the last line of her letter. Quote, we are desperately in need of Rowan's medical assistance and would be devastated if we lost these benefits, unquote. Referencing medical assistance or Medicaid, the same program at the state level. So you have two families now uh, totally reliant on these programs, either the, the ACA more broadly or in particular the Medicaid program. Both families referencing bankruptcy, bankruptcy because of health care challenges in the life of that family. One that would be on the brink of bankruptcy, Rowan's family, and the other that actually went through bankruptcy because of those health care challenges. No family in the United States of America should have to worry about going bankrupt because of a health care problem. We're well on our way to solving these problems, and no one should pull the rug out from under those families. But unfortunately, when, you, when it gets to this legislation, that's exactly what could happen to many of them. I'll give you a third example, Alex. Recently, I, I met Alex, who's from southeastern Pennsylvania. He's nine years old, and he has Down syndrome. Here's what Alex wrote to me. Here's what a nine-year-old wrote. Quote, although I have a medical diagnosis of Down syndrome, I'm an excellent student. I get 100% of my spelling tests, and I get picked as a math king quite often. My parents, my teachers, and everyone around, uh, around me thought from the beginning there was nothing that I could not do. I am able to get a good education because of the supports that I get from special education. That's why I'm very concerned about possible cuts to Medicaid funding in our schools. Medicaid funding in schools is a very, very important part of what makes it possible for us to receive successful education at school and become contributing members of our society, unquote. That's a nine-year-old in Pennsylvania reminding us about this important program. Alex has tremendous potential that would be in jeopardy by the proposed cuts to Medicaid. Number four, Peg Fagan, uh, a Pennsylvanian. The Republican bill includes an age tax that will allow insurers to charge older Americans up to five times more than younger Americans. Peg is from Bucks County, southeastern Pennsylvania. She's a three-time cancer survivor who could not afford health insurance prior to the Affordable Care Act. She's approaching Medicare eligibility, but still has a few years to go before she's old enough to enroll. Peg was able to find affordable health insurance thanks to the ACA, but under the Republican bill, she could once again be discriminated against for being an older adult, an older adult. And another possible uh, object of discrimination would be because she is a cancer survivor. That was the old law. That's where we were before that insurance companies were allowed under the law to discriminate in that fashion. They could discriminate against you because you're a woman. They could discriminate against you because you had pre-existing conditions. They could discriminate against you because you're a cancer survivor. They could discriminate against you uh, because of your age and so many other circumstances. I thought we were beyond that. I thought we had uh, finally cured that problem. But some want to go back in time. So. The CBO tells us the Republican bill would rip away health care from 23 million Americans. I just went through some Pennsylvania stories. We've got a lot more, and you'll be hearing them. But for Hannah and Madeline and Rowan and Alex and Peg, we should ask ourselves a couple of basic questions. Health care for those Pennsylvanians should not be made worse, and they should not be made worse off in order to give the top one-tenth of one percent, a $200,000 giveaway. That's what the, the first version of the House health care bill would do. 
it would give the top one-tenth of one percent an average tax cut of $197,000. I exaggerated. I said $200,000. Let's be exact, $197,000 each. Why would we take away health care uh, or even risk or even create uncertainty about health care for Hannah and Madeline and Rowan and Alex and Peg, um, because some people around here want to give tax cuts to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars to very wealthy people. That's not what I call a health care bill. So the Senate has an obligation, in my judgment, both parties, to stop this bill from it being enacted into law. We cannot allow this legislation to pass or anything like it to become law. So I ask each member of the Senate to consider these Pennsylvanians and plenty in your home states and the countless more like them who are anxiously hoping and praying that this Congress will not vote to take away uh, their health care.